strong. I'm just mean to you when we're not on camera. That's usually how it works, right? You're just a mean person, Chris. Yes, that's it. Yeah. And my voice is way more powerful than yours, too. I noticed that on the last video. Well, I'm generally that soft-spoken guy. You know? Yeah, soft-spoken dick. Yeah. <laughs> There's a... Who was it? It was Winston Churchill, actually, so you'll like this, because... He's all like me? No, I was going to say, because of the British thing, because of how much you watch the Grand Tour and whatnot. Um, and <laughs> it says that tact... Tact. <laughs> right. Tactful tact. Um, is the ability to tell someone to go to hell and have them look forward to the trip. Well stated. Do you understand why I talk this way now? Yeah, because you're a dick. That <laughs> <laughs> keeps coming back to that for me. Um, so, what's up? <laughs> We're on episode three of this shit show. Yeah. Um, not that it's a shitty show, it's just a shit show, guys. Um, nothing ever planned, nothing ever scripted. We just, uh, Chris and I like to drink the pre-workout in here and chat a little bit and Sometimes it's funny and sometimes it's not. So you get what you get on the deals, I guess. What's up in your life? Anything new, buddy? Um, well, you're getting to see me after like three or four hours of sleep because I came over after the shift and crashed. But uh, yeah, other than that, just trying to get stuff squared away with the house. Hey, here's product comparison because you're one of the only people I know that have slept on both. Okay. Sleep number versus Tempur-Pedic. I've got the uh, sleep number bed and Chris owns a Tempur-Pedic. So I would say that in general, this is not an apples to apples comparison because as nice as my Tempur-Pedic is, it's still about a third of the price of your sleep number. Nice, right? So <laughs> um, it's comfortable. I personally am not used to the air mattress, but again, it's not really an air mattress. Well, I don't know. It is fine. I still yeah. like temper, but you know, it is what it is. You're so damn tired. How many how many hours did you work? Uh last night, um it was about thirteen. Six thirty to seven thirty. Nice. <laughs> you know, right in the middle of the week so that the rest of the week can have screwed up sleep patterns. But right. hey, I wanna do a little follow up on uh <laughs> we put two episodes of this out and I busted my client's balls on both of them. Um, but you didn't I, say former clients, so that's you know positive, right? Right, they keep coming back because the training's good, even though the attitude sometimes is not. I'm a bit bossy out there, it's my way or get the <laughs> sorry, mom. Here it comes. So, push, push fingers in your ears, people that want to hear a dirty word. It's get it's do it my way or get the fuck out. I don't have time for it. Um, I want results. I don't, I don't want people dicking around while they're in there. I want results. I get a little mean sometimes. Um, and I don't mention clients by name. You know that. I've got a hard, fast rule on that. What do you remember? So let's let's start with Kent. Kent. <laughs> what can I say about Kent? Kent started with me about five months ago, six months ago. And I think he actually started because of the YouTube channel. He did. He was watching the YouTube. He's, he's one of the, he was one of my twelve watchers at that time that watched. Um, he he and Kent worked and millions together more around the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe by the time this one comes. Uh, but Kent, here's how Kent was built when he first saw me. I mean, he's, he's got good structure, okay, from the back. And from the side, it's a little deceiving. I'm sorry, from the front, it's a little deceiving. From, from, from the side, he, he looked like he was carrying half a watermelon under his shirt. He just had a bubble gut on him. And that's what he said he wanted to work on and get rid of. Um, and this is how bad it was. I used to try, I wanted to give him drag curls, and it wasn't pretty to watch, because he had to drag, you drag that barbell over your body, right? So he had to drag it around, and then back in, and back, it, it looked really awkward to where I just stopped giving him drag curls. It wasn't worth the problem, okay? And uh, I am proud to say that Kent is doing a photo shoot. Um, I'm shooting, I'm shooting him for photos, not just shooting him. Like I wanted to do when we started, but he's, he's got it together. And uh, we're doing a photo shoot on old, on old Kent. And the reason I bring him up today is because he yelled at me today. 
Really? Very first set, right? Can you? I mean, Kent's not the kind to yell at somebody, but he has an aggressive personality. Um, and he tries to take it out like a lot of us do in the gym there. Okay? But on the gym? In the gym? On the gym, and no, was generally in the gym. He knows better than to mess with me. However, today I decided I wanted him to do drag curls again. Because he's, you know my phrase, he's earned the right yeah. to do drag curls. Because now it's not ugly to watch for me anymore. I can put up with it. And uh, he's doing his drag curls, and everybody, when they first start to, do, start to do drag curls, they think they have to get that barbell clear to here. They just mentally want to do that. And no, you're dragging it up your body, and it stops right here. That's where it's going to stop. Your bicep's going to hit your forearm eventually, and you're not going to be able to pull anymore. Okay? So Ken's doing them, and then he's been in his wrist like this. I said, stop breaking your wrists. And you can tell him start to get impatient. And he's not dragging it across his shirt. I want it to lightly touch your shirt. Not your body, but touch your shirt. Okay, if your shirt is a clingy shirt. That's how little resistance I want on that bar. And I'm telling him, you're not dragging. I need you to drag. And he's not. And he's, I need you to drag. And he says, I'm fucking trying. And I went, nice that's what i want that's what I want. I want that fire i want i wanted the life out of him he showed some emotion he walked away and i gave him the big hand five and said how much weight have you lost and in the past two weeks ken has lost 12 pounds yeah because i've got him on the uh axum sledge diet basically um the same one that i was on when we did that contest uh, we're going to load him up with water, we're going to flood his system, we're going to drain that system, and then we're going to take the pictures. Uh, but his body's responding very well, and he's doing a great job. So first of all, kudos to him for that. Second one I'm not going to mention is Jenny Moore. Uh, Jenny's the one that had the little breakdown. Remember remember that, Chris? Yeah, but setbacks. Uh, setbacks, right. And uh, man versus woman book and, and everything that was going on with Jenny A. And among other things, yes. Uh, Jenny M has lost three pounds in a week. So she's doing very well. Kent is doing very well. So the bottom line is when we, when we as trainers bust your balls to do a better job, it's going to hurt for a little bit, but then you're going to get mad, you're going to get angry, and you're going to show your trainer, and you're going to get this shit done. Maybe maybe the key for your own training is to call yourself out on video, and you'll lose weight in the next week or two. Believe me, there's nobody more critical. <laughs> than me on me um, so we got those two things knocked out anything else oh, and, and here's a nugget of wisdom and I'll just rephrase it for him you're always going to be your own worst critic so if you're feeling real bad about yourself you're probably the one who thinks the worst yes and pictures don't lie so when you look in the mirror, it's really funny because I look in the mirror. No, I, f and I feel like the pictures lie and the mirror doesn't lie. But I... Now see, I, what I see in the, the mirror opposite. is totally different. When I look in the mirror, I still see a skinny kid, the skinny high school kid that's now smooth and, and has no abs and has got a little belly coming back onto him again is what I see when I look in the mirror. And then I take a picture and I go, man, really? I'm not bad. Well, <laughs> that's not bad. You know, there's a chance that the goon lighting doesn't show up until the picture, so that might be part of it. That might be part of it, too. The same goon lighting on the mirror, though, but I have, I have specifically placed those mirrors in the most complimentary spots. Uh, remember Sierra, she couldn't, uh, couldn't get her eyes off the mirror when she was here. Uh, bless her heart, I don't know how she's doing. I haven't seen her since that day. Yeah, well, you probably scared her with the workout. <laughs> the word work. Um, no, she's dollars. I think it was that line on the the application where it says, "Are you a masochist?" And and if she doesn't check yes, then I probably don't train with you. She might have a little in her. I don't know. I'm not saying anything. I'm not going to start any rumors. <laughs> but um, so yeah, that's that. Um, Did you have um, what was the other thing? Uh, we're going to talk about tempo or something. Tempo training. Tempo training. There's a new phrase for you guys. Tempo training. Tempo training. When I, when I train, I find the beat of the music. I wish I had music playing in the background. It'd be great to be able to bump, hit the cue and play the music. But whatever the beat of the music is, I want to make sure that I'm not exploding on the way up and then just letting that barbell fall down and then pushing it and then letting it fall down. Same thing with pulling. 
I want, I want the same pace back and forth. So I will pick the beat of the music. And lift with the tempo of the music. Always have. If there's no music, I'll flat out, I'll go home. And it's not because the music energizes me. That's how I keep my tempo. So we always talk about pace. And we always talk about speed. We always talk about timing on your way. But we never talk about tempo training. And now that I planted that seed, Chris, I noticed two or three weeks ago, pointed out, I said, are you intentionally training to the music? Or is it just happening? And you said, no, it's just happening. Yeah, a lot of time I can't hear it. I'll tune it out if I'm really into it. But it's funny because I watched them four straight sets. Just tempo training. Them. Yeah. Jenny M. Tempo training. Kent. Tempo training. And none of them realized they were doing it until I pointed it out to them. And then they looked frustrated like they were in denial. But they fell right back into tempo training. So give that a shot if you want to try something new. What do you mean? Like, what do you, when you say tempo training and someone hears that, how would they mm -hmm. take that then and use it for their own workout? Every song has a beat. Okay. Sometimes it bum, 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 bum. We'll have to wait for the every other beat. Bum, 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 bum. Sometimes it bum, 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 bum. So you bum, bum, bum. Boom. To the beat of the music that's playing. Get into a rhythm. Make it very rhythmical. Every single song will have a two-count beat, two beat and a four-count beat to it that you can do. And it's super, super easy to do and to, and to follow the flow. What it does is it makes you concentrate a little harder. And it, it, it keeps you honest on you. And the other thing that I like about it, my clients, a lot of them will say... How, you know, they're, they're lifting five, six, seven reps or so, and they'll say, how many was that? i say, you're not paying me to count. You're paying me to train you. Don't worry about the number. I'll tell you when you're done. Or, I will tell you when you're or done. Or you'll not be able to do it. Right. You'll, you'll fail, and I'll spot you there. But I will tell you when you're done. You don't have to worry about how many, how many do you want me to do. How many can you do? I don't know. Good. Let me go do them. And they look really confused. And what tempo training will do is you won't be counting your reps anymore. You'll know if you've worked too much and you need to either slow the pace down of those repetitions, slow that beat down that you're maybe go every third beat or something on the song. Uh, if you're doing too many reps, slow it down to make that weight feel heavier and then make your correction on your next set. That's why we do three, four sets of each exercise. That first one I consider a throwaway. You're, you're getting your mind muscle connection going you're finding how strong are you that day on those curls? How strong are you on those push downs? Well, that wasn't enough weight, so let's kick it up 20 pounds, get a real set in this time. Okay, so where a lot of people say leave a couple reps in the tank, I'm not a believer in that However. whatsoever. However, <laughs> Jeff Differ, however, what I am in favor of is, man, I don't even know how to say it right. I, I don't. I just. I just don't know how to say it right. I don't leave the one in the tank. That the first set, I always consider a throwaway to make sure that the next two or three. I would say sets as, are good. The first set is your. You're kind of setting the the bar for the rest of the sets. Mm -hmm. So you kind of know where you're at. You know, if you are going, if your goal is to do ten and you get ten and it's just way too easy, well, you know, obviously you got to change something. Right. Um. One other thing as far as the tempo goes, uh, you know, don't kill yourselves. Like, no dubstep or any of that. Like, we don't want, like, a million reps really yeah. fast like that. Um, Speed metal. Yeah. Death metal. There's a reason it's called death metal. <laughs> right. Um, but for, for more fitness and aesthetics training, that relaxation moment, kind of like when you said, don't just let the bar fall on you. This is more time under tension if you're controlling it on the way down. It mm -hmm. is more work. It will help build more muscle. Um, at the end of the day, I'd say, so for my, my fitness background, um, the eccentric or the relaxed part should be the slow part if you're going to do a slow part. And then explosive on the concentric or the contraction. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed.
because technically when you're stretching a muscle and it's under tension, um, you actually get a much uh, higher amount of, I don't want to say muscle damage, but that is what most weightlifting is, is muscle damage, um, and strength gain. So I used to train a lot of people for pull-ups, specifically a lot of women, and they tend not to be great at pull-ups. So you have them start at the top and kind of slowly lower yourself down. Drag, baby. Mm -hmm. Same idea, until you can do one normally. So same thing for your tempo training. You know, if you get to the point where that weight's just nothing, you don't have more weights, change the tempo. Correct. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Chris, when he came to me, was a weightlifter. Yeah. And we turned him into a bodybuilder. Now, he's not... It's not that he wants to be a bodybuilder. Okay, but and for those of you that are fairly new to the game or you just go to the gym and you work out and, and you're done, uh, the difference between that is, is a weightlifter cares how much weight they lift and a bodybuilder cares what they look like based off of the weight they lifted. Yeah, it's and all about priorities. It's all about the priorities. Um, and there's a little bodybuilder in everybody because, you know, we're all vain, right? Exactly. Especially um, this guy. There's <laughs> just a bit. Hey, at my age, I can, I can, I can be that. Um, there are also different types of people in the gym, and if you walk in with this, now we've opened your eyes to this. If you walk in, you'll be able to spot them. There are people that are just there because they know they're supposed to work out. They're going through the motions. They're going through the motions. Um, they are working out. Okay, that's what they're there to do. They're there to work out, and it's, it's. Well, there's three, the three different types. The first, the first one is the guy that comes in with three or four of his buddies. They all drop their gym bags right around the bench press. That's the first place they go to is the bench press or the squat rack or somewhere where they can do deadlifts. They're all, they make a whole bunch of noise. They're all filming their, their, their shit for YouTube. Oh, now I got to watch it because now I do that. I got my own gym. Like I would never do that in a public gym. I would never do that in a public gym. But, uh, yeah, and they're creative, and that's all they care about is, is, and it takes them a half hour for three guys to do bench press, okay? They're not getting anything out of that other than lifting weights. Not a lot of intensity with the 10 second, or 10 <laughs> seconds, that 10 minute rest in between the seconds. Correct, and the posting and the, them checking to see how many people liked what they posted and all of that. That doesn't belong in a gym. Stop doing that. Uh, and that's the smaller percentage at the bottom. Then there's this big percentage of people in here that are the ones that are working out. Bless their hearts. They're doing what they're supposed to do. But then there's a guy that will walk in or the young lady that will walk in, hoodie on when it's 95 degrees outside, and the hoodie's over their face. They look down. They will not look at you. They put their gym bag in the back where it belongs. They typically will leave a mess in the sink with their pre-workout or their protein powder or something. Uh, but then they'll walk out there and they train. They are there to train. They're there for a purpose. They're training for an event. They're training for a show. But they're there to train. So you got people that are working out, which is the people that the, the gym wants. Because they're going to come occasionally. They're going to pay their $40, $50 a month dues. They're going to pay their gym maintenance fee. And they're going to party while they're there. They're there to socialize and have a good time. That, that treadmill is paid off for most people. Yeah, <laughs> Exactly. Exactly, and then you. But, but the people that are there to train, man, those are the ones I love. Those are the ones I want the most. And now that you're in, now that you're in that environment, ask yourself: Are you training? Or are you working out? Yeah. And if you want to work out, that's fine. I understand not everybody wants to train, but if you can set an event, whether it be bikini season coming up, whether it be high school reunion coming up, birthday is a good one. Birthday coming hey, up. by my such and such birthday, I want to be in my best shape for, you know. Exactly. And, and, and the evidence and the proof of that is what Kent has done. Kent has decided, he, he came to me two months ago and he said, I'm, I'm starting to see some results out of this. I want to do a photo shoot. And I said, first of all, let me shoot you. Because I know the lighting and the posing and everything better than anybody that you'll work with. And I know your flaws and how to hide them. But second of all, let me guide you through this and let's see what you can do. And it's extraordinary what he's done because he has a purpose. So if he can find a purpose or a reason to train, go for it. Well, and I think originally he had had, he wanted to lose some kind of large arbitrary amount of weight in a really short amount of time. 
I'm gonna be honest, when I heard it, I laughed. I was like, there's no way to do it, but 12 pounds in two weeks. I mean, mm-hmm. you probably won't do that for another six weeks, but I mean, that's such a huge amount to lose so fast. Well, you know, I said that when I got down to 172, 170, I said, Chris, this is my range. I got I got one week left in this contest and I'm at 170. Uh, 168 is about my limit. I'm surprised I got down from 190 in six and a half weeks down to the 170. I said, I'm pleased with that, but I don't have anything else left to give. And dropped eight pounds in the last five days. Yeah. Uh, dropped so, one gallon of water in the last <laughs> five days. Yeah, yeah, minimum. Wow, minimum. But uh, got down to way thin. 162 was just, that was too much. That was too much. I'm a nice, plump, pleasant, uh, 177. But, but, but you look so happy. Happy, I know. I look happy. Bitch. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what we're training today. Oh, that's right. You, have you, you know, we, you don't have a clue, do you? Uh, I just hope it's not legs again. Well, it's I was supposed to work legs on Monday. And Remember? We no, we didn't work legs on Monday. We did the free weights versus bands yeah, because I knew you didn't want to work legs again. Stuff. Yeah. Right. So I didn't work it Monday. So four days later, I was supposed to work legs, which is Friday. Okay. Today is... I don't know what day it is. Friday. I think it's probably Friday. Friday. So today should be legs. However, I got up early this morning, trained Kent, trained Jenny M, uh, ate my pre-workout meal. And went downstairs, and while you were sleeping, <laughs> did squats and Nordic hamstring curls, leg press, leg extensions, calves. Oh, so, so what you're saying is that we're not training together. I'm going to get trained today. No, we are training together. I'm going to, uh, my lower body is tore up. We're going to go in and we're going to hit some chest focus, and we're going to hit some shoulder focus. Okay. And uh, probably take both of those for future video. Yeah, right. that makes sense. So you're ready to do some chest and some uh, shoulders. The only reason we're not doing triceps is I did arms yesterday. That would be a little redundant. <laughs> working two days in a row. Plus, it's a long ass workout. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Ready to go? Got to do some signing off then. Um, this this week's dedication is a no brainer. This one goes to. Uh, uh, Kent number one and Jenny M number two done a fantastic job, both of you two. And I know both of you ass clowns watch this stuff. Um, Jenny shares it around with hospital. She's uh, working in, in nursing as well and uh, shows, shows them to everybody. But now, now she got something to talk about because she got a good compliment off of that. And, uh, and Kent, so that's, that's what we're going to dedicate this video to. Um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. As, as we get, you know, we've never done this on film before. This is our third one. We normally just sit and bullshit like this, and, and there's no camera rolling. Yeah, I'm usually a lot meaner when the camera's not rolling, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, he, he, he tries to tame it down because I'm kind of an ass. And I two, like two asses don't work well together. He makes up for my lack of meanness, so. I'm not sure whether I like that or not, but... Um, the flash cup is almost out of the uh, ass and sledge product. I mean, it's time to go downstairs, right? All right. Support the brand, guys. Watch the channel. Thank you. All right, well, I sure hope you hit play. Be strong. Be strong.